HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday at 6.30 until 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, Hiller's football battles Norwood in the final game of the season. Hiller's swimming celebrates senior night, plus much more. But first, Hiller's middle school football recognizes teammate Andrew Cooper, who was injured during the season. So it was Hopkins Middle School's uh, final scrimmage of the season. All the kids had been working really, really hard. Andrew's a multi-sport athlete and it was really important for him to play in the last football scrimmage of the year. And it was probably his best run of the year. He broke it out to the left, uh, eluded like two tacklers. And then as he was being tackled, he suffered a pretty decent uh, ankle injury. And luckily, you know, we have great responders, not only the parents that were in attendance there, but our athletic trainer was immediately on the scene, as well as first responders from uh, Hopkinton EMS. And really, they were in and out of there with Andrew in about 15 minutes. It, you know, and I'm sure to Andrew and for us as coaches and parents, it felt like an eternity, but it was just such an amazing response. Andrew's about as tough as they come. He was still joking around a little bit. And from what I hear, he's getting the best attention he can possibly get. And we can't wait to have him back. Today was our uniform return day. But more importantly, the parents and the kids reached out to me. They wanted to do something special for Andrew. And so they all came down. And what they did was they signed a football here with some well wishes. And in the back, you can probably hear some of the chatter. They're all signing a card, and the number of kids who were just jumping uh, for the opportunity to say something nice to their teammate was unreal. And that's really what our football team is about, is community, family, and commitment to one another. And, I mean, nothing proves that more uh, than today. Andrew, my man, um, I can't tell you how much it broke your coaching staff's heart for your season to end the way it did. And that's because of everything you've given us this season. You're a part of what we are. You're a part of this community. And we wouldn't be the same team without you. So we can't wait to have you back. I know this isn't a, you know, as much as we wish we could do for you, but we hope that it's something. And you're a strong kid. You're going to be back better than ever in the fall. Best of luck to you. I hope you have a great summer, and I'll see you around. You're a champ, Andrew. Hillers football took on Norwood in their final game of the season. Here's a look at what happened. Hopkinton Hillers football took on Norwood in the season finale. The first possession of the game did not go well for the Hillers. Out of the gun, motion along the right, and he's going to fake the handoff. Looks to his right, throws to his right, and it's intercepted. Jason Danahy is there to pick it off. Intended target was Nicholas Essie. After the interception, Norwood got on the scoreboard first. With a back to either side, motion from left to right, the tight end in motion. Receiver spread out to the right as well, takes the snap a little bit low, but pulls it up, and here he goes, finds some room across midfield, 40, 35, 30, 20, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone. A 56-yard touchdown run by Jason Dennehy. The extra point makes it a 7 to nothing game, but the Hillers responded. Left to right, takes the snap, rolls to his right under a little bit of pressure. He'll throw up the right side, as a target, and it's caught. And there he goes, Ethan Champlin is going to go all the way to the 10-yard line. What a connection there. His left is Mulvaney, three receivers spread out to his left. 
Takes the snap, rolls to his left, and he's going to take it himself along the far sideline. And did he get in? He was close. Yes, he did. Touchdown, Hillers. A 7-7 game, but Norwood would find the end zone two more times in the first quarter. And they led it 21-7, heading into the second. To the 40, to the 50, here goes Christian Sales, to the 30, to the 20, the 10, and oh no, it's another Norwood touchdown. So, Slotman to his right, takes the snap, and he's going to pass, throws up the right side of the field, and he connects, and it's a touchdown. A 44-yard touchdown reception to James Gamble, the senior. The Hillers struck first in the second quarter. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, and he is going to take it himself to the 20, fighting his way to the 15, still on his feet, and he was able to spin around a defender and fight his way up to about the 12-yard line. What a run there by Cole Salyards. Salyards going to line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney the back to his right, and he is going to hand it off. Mulvaney finds some room right up the middle, and into the end zone he goes. A 10-yard touchdown run. Hillers make it a 21-14 game with a 10-yard Cam Mulvaney touchdown run, but Norwood strikes right back. They can tighten up here and get their offense back out there with a chance to tie the game up. End over end it goes. It'll sail back to about the 12-yard line. Here comes the return. Along the far side goes Mateer, and he has some room. Uh-oh, across midfield. 45, 40, 30, up to the 20, the 10. And he's into the end zone. Unbelievable. 28 to 14, Norwood leading, but the Hillers had an answer. Just declined it. Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun. Takes the snap, looks upfield, throws up the middle, has Mulvaney, and it's complete. And up to the 16 yard line go the Hillers. Oh, maybe because of that, they'll come into the second half a little colder. And this is going to be a run up the middle on the keeper Salyards. Not a problem. A one-yard touchdown run. Cole Salyards finishes off the touchdown drive with a one-yard run. And it would stay 28-21 Norwood until the halftime break. Norwood struck for two touchdowns in the third quarter and took a 42-21 lead into the fourth. 20, the 10, and into the end zone. Ryan Mateer breaks free and runs 61 yards up the field for the touchdown. Norwood struck for another touchdown to start the fourth. Back to either side, receivers spread out to either side and he will hand it off to the right back. Here goes the call and the call's gonna break free. The 30, the 20, the 10 and all the way to the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown Norwood. The Hillers got some fourth quarter offense going, trailing 49 to 21. Spread out to either side. He'll hand it off. Here goes Mulvaney breaking free up the far side of the 40, the 35, the 30. And he's tripped out of bounds just past the 30. A great run there by Cam Mulvaney. From about the five, Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney to his right. He'll take the snap. He'll roll to his right, and he's going to find some room along the far side of the field, and he gets into the end zone. Cole Salyards with some nice footwork. A five-yard run by Cole Salyards. The two-point conversion was no good. The Hillers were quick to get the ball back and found the end zone again. 40 to the 25 to the 20, and he's pushed out of bounds at around the 15. A big pickup there by Carrazza. Gonna line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney to his right, takes the snap, under pressure, finds some room along the near side, and he is going to get towards the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did! Touchdown, Hillers! A 12-yard run this time by Salyards, and a successful two-point conversion makes it a 49-35 game. The Hillers played hard until the end, but fell in the season finale by a 49-35 final. The Hillers finished the season with two wins and three losses. Congratulations to Coach McLean and the Hillers on a great season. 
We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead. You're watching HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago, and it's uh, persisted right to this, this very moment. Um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of Center School, which honors Team Hoyt, uh, is, is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick. To me, besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt, the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between her father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News Live. The select board approved a street name request to name a seat Hoyt's Way in honor of marathon legend Dick Hoyt, who recently passed away. So that passes. Um, moving on to the next um, agenda item, name request. The board will review a request from Chuck Joseph to consider approving a street name for the new Hopkinton Village Center residential development behind 23 and 35 Main Street. The request was submitted for Hoyt's Run, but it has been modified and is now uh, Hoyt's Way. A map showing the location was included in the board's packet, and the permitting team has no adverse comments on the proposal. The street is a private condominium way and assigning a street name to such roads is common practice in Hopkinton and aids with emergency process, uh, emergency response. Um, Chuck Joseph, do you have any details, new additional details that you'd, uh, uh, about your request? Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, no, I think um, when I submitted the request, we uh, wanted to pay tribute to um, Dick Hoyt, who passed recently and who has been such a uh, inspiration to this community over some 35 or 40 years, as I understand it. Um, we did, we were originally uh, talking about naming it Hoyt's Run. Um, we were able to interact with the Hoyt family who requested that we use the term Hoyt singular way. And we would like to just modify our request for that name. Okay. Um, board members, do you have any questions? Mr. Herr? I think it's a great idea. Thanks. Ms. Lafrenia? Uh, what the Hoyts have meant to this town, it's fine with me. I think it's great. Ms. Ritterbush? No, I think it sounds very good. And we don't have a street already with that name. So it's perfect. Mm. Or, uh, from my perspective, I think it's a wonderful sentiment. I think it's uh, it means an awful lot. And I think the Hoyt family is uh, well represented and um, and this is a fantastic idea. Uh, Mr. Kilduff, uh, would you like to speak on the on the comment letter that you submitted to the board? Uh, just to uh, congratulate um, Mr. Joseph and uh, Mary Jo in particular um, has had experience interfacing with the Hoyts through her many years of work on the marathon committee and uh, she knows uh, this is a heartfelt request, and uh, I just applaud all of you for, for moving this forward. Thank you. I, I, uh, I, I echo your sentiments, and I think, it's, uh, I think it is extremely appropriate here. Um, I request a motion to approve the name Hoyt Way for the Hopkins. I'll move. <laughs> Second. I'm moving early. <laughs> Hiller's Swimming hit the pool in their senior night meet versus Boston Latin. Here's a look. Hopkinton Hiller's Swimming posted results for their meet against Boston Latin and then celebrated senior night. Here's a look at the festivities. That was great. Nice job. Good job there. A little tiny bit short in the entry, but I think it'll score well. 
Six, six and a half. Six and a half. And that'll conclude the diving for the evening. All right, look at this. Alyssa's giving it her all for her uh, senior night here. She's, all right, nice swim. Excellent for both of them. Great job, Alyssa, and excellent job, Kevin. That was quite a race. What a finish. Uh, let's see what happens on the turn here. At the minute, you've just got a little bit of um, a lead over uh, Eliz Elizabeth, but Elizabeth is looking strong. She's picking it up her kick. Deirdre's picking up her kick, and Natalie is as well. Really great race. Good race. So, yeah. uh, Natalie, Deirdre, and Elizabeth. Really nice by all five swimmers, actually. I'd love to know the times. I'll have to text the scoring deck. Yeah. That was nice a nice turn. turn. Nice turn. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Wow. Oop. Somebody's Competition. coming up on him. Well, Declan Cassie. Yeah. Cassie. And Cassie. Cassie's, Cassie's uh, right with them. Beat Cassie's going to win it. She's going to win it, I think. Oh, She's gonna I win don't it. know. I don't know. It's going to be a. Wow. Whoa. That was Photo some finish. finish. Very nice. I don't know. She put the afterburners on at the end. Yeah. But Declan definitely was right there uh, with her, as was Pierce. So it'd be nice to see the times on that one. Definitely. She wow. and Katie are neck and neck. And uh, Anna is, uh, she's doing okay, holding her own there. She is, she looks good. She does, she does. All right, uh, Lucas is looking good. Wow, Davis, Davis uh, won by a substantial lead, but there's, uh, Lucas for second, and uh, Ryan there in third. And for the girls, we have, uh, I think, Katie, then Ishii, and then um, Anna will replace third. All right. Our bones. The Dutas. He was a uh, cameraman uh, last year. Yeah, he was. Right? And yeah. I think even the year before, he, he ran it a lot. All right, and the Fishers. They have Alyssa has a twin brother who will be playing baseball at Fairfield next year. Wow. All right, the whole brows. Very nice, the Lucases. And um, I mentioned before, Alyssa is the only one who's going to swim, but um, Juliana is going to RPI for lacrosse. She's a goalie. That's it. I think that's a wrap. Nice shot of all the seniors and Pablo. Hillers Swimming is scheduled to wrap up their fall two season Thursday night at the Milford Pool versus Ashland. Hopkinton resident and president of the 26.2 Foundation, Tim Kilduff, was recently recognized by Kent State University, here's a look. The next award I'd like to present is the Centennial Alumni Award. This is our highest honor bestowed upon a former student who graduated from a program within the college more than 50 years ago. This award recognizes an alumnus who has made significant contributions to society, bringing distinction to Kent State University. It is my pleasure 
to announce Tim Kilduff as this year's award recipient. A proven leader, Tim has extensive experience in public affairs and volunteer organization management. Tim's contributions have been recognized by the Reagan administration, Vice President Al Gore, and Massachusetts governors Weld, King, and Dukakis. Tim served as Boston Marathon race director in 1983 and 1984 and founded the nonprofit 26.2 Foundation aimed at advocating the virtues of the marathon run and the power of the human spirit. When I received a call from Dean Hannon, notifying me that I was selected to receive the College of Education, Health and Human Services Centennial Alumni Award, my first reaction was to ask, are you sure you have the right person? His confirmation prompted me to take time to seriously reflect on my time at Kent. My Kent experience on the track team, activities like the Major Events Committee, and my membership in the fraternity of Phi Gamma Delta was my introduction to the power of teams. I'm thankful that somewhere along the way, I was exposed to and absorbed the importance of inclusiveness and collaboration. Both are vital attributes, especially in today's world, and especially when venturing into volunteerism. I'm passionate about service and volunteerism as they afford the volunteer the opportunity to utilize their energy and talents while adding value to important community work. Being acknowledged by our university for what little I have done in the community touches my heart. My hope for any student who chooses KSU is that they take full advantage of all that it has to offer and to bring what they have learned back to their community of choice. Oh, and one more thing. Go Flashes. Thank you. Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by Tim Kilduff. Tim, congratulations on winning the Centennial Alumni Award and your induction into the Kent State University Hall of Fame. Uh, can you talk about this honor and how it feels to be inducted and winning the Centennial Alumni Award? Well, it, uh, Tom, thank you very much, first of all. And um, I can tell you when I first got a call from the dean of the college, I really did stress. I must have said it three, if not five times in the call. Are you sure you've got the right person? Uh, you know, Kent State is uh, located in the northeast section of Ohio, you know, roughly 600 miles away. Um, and I don't know how they track this kind of stuff. So as much as um, I really don't think I deserve, nor is the recognition necessary, I, I got to tell you, it, uh, it's kind of fun. And it really did. It made me think about my experience at, uh, at Kent State quite a few years ago. And speaking of that, can you talk about your days at Kent State, uh, what you studied and what it was like to go there? Well, you know, Kent State is uh, not far, it's 11 miles from Akron, about 30 miles from Cleveland, northeast section of uh, Ohio. And I'm a New Englander, born and raised in New England. So uh, to make that trek out to uh, Ohio, 50 plus years ago was like going to the wild, wild west, quite frankly. Um, but Kent was a, was a uh, we used to call it the largest unknown university in the country. There were about 20,000 students then, even then. Uh, and it wasn't unfortunately until the 1970s when uh, there were the shootings uh, uh, and the deaths of four students at Kent that really made this, uh, this institution recognized on a global level. It broadened my horizon. It got me out of New England. Uh, it, 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 got a, it gave me a much different flavor for people, places, and things. So it was a real plus for me. That's terrific. And I read that uh, after you got your Bachelor of Science degree at Penn State, uh, you went into public relations at American University. Uh, what made you want to do that? Well, you know, uh, Tom, I, uh, I was in association management work, and I did some graduate work at, at American. Uh, the, the, the interesting part about my undergraduate work um, was that it was in education and the classes that interested me the most were the interpersonal human dynamics classes. I had to do some student teaching. Those were the things that, uh, that interested me. A jump from uh, teaching uh, small group dynamics 
to sort of public affairs and public relations was not that big a leap. And uh, right now you're doing some great work with the uh, 26.2 Foundation, uh, which to be described briefly promotes the marathon spirit in the history of the Boston Marathon. And your organization is currently working on building a Boston Marathon Museum in Hopkinton. How is that coming along? And do we have a date uh, for the expected opening yet? Well, to talk about this, you cannot uh, not you can't you can't help but mention Hopkins Marathon footprint. Uh, we know the race starts here, but uh, in a couple of years, uh, we'll mark the hundredth time that the Boston Marathon has started in Hopkinton, and that goes back to the Brown family, deep roots in Hopkinton, that sort of thing. So, it's it's kind of an obvious place. Uh, on the on the in the starting area of the most prominent marathon in the world, to think about building an institution, uh, we call it the International Marathon Center. Uh, it's it is meant to be global in nature. Uh, it doesn't. Ha it's not going to have a narrow focus. There'll be a Hall of Fame, and there'll of course be a museum. But more importantly, there'll be an education component that is wide ranging. Uh, for example, Tom. The development of democracy, as we all know, started in Greece, uh, and it it was in jeopardy in 490 BC when the Persians invaded Athens. Uh, the the Athenians prevailed. That allowed democracy to, to 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 develop. Ultimately, the Battle of Marathon being fought in Marathon, Greece, was the spiritual beginning of marathon running. Quite frankly, because the warriors have to had to force march from from uh, Marathon Greece to Athens to protect the city uh, after they won the battle at Marathon. So the links, the, the commonality between Marathon Greece and Hopkinton are significant. Absolutely. Uh, well, Tim, uh, we want to congratulate you on the award. And uh, despite what you think, I think the uh, Hall of Fame is <laughs> certainly deserved. Uh, so congratulations and thanks so much for talking to us about this honor. Tom, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. An upcoming event you should know about, EHOP presents their annual Know Your Vote program. It'll take place on Monday, May 3rd from 7 to 8.30 p.m. It's a unique opportunity to get the answers you need from town officials before town meeting. You can check it out on the HCAM YouTube live stream. Residents are encouraged to submit questions before the forum by email at knowyourvote at ehop.org, via Facebook or Twitter, or by commenting on the YouTube live stream. Our picture of the week, Hopkinton Hillers swimming hits the pool for their senior night meet versus Boston Latin. The Hillers ended up getting a victory in their final swim meet of the year. Upcoming town government meetings on HCAM TV on Monday, April 26th at 7 p.m. You can catch the planning board meeting on HCAM TV, Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. You can catch the Hopkinton Women's Club annual Meet the Candidates Night program. For all the town government meeting information, head over to hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30, we will be back. Coming up on HCAM TV, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts presents Sustainability and Climate Change Lecture with Scott Richardson. As always, thanks for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.